Hi everyone, this is Roland. I want to make a short video just to tell you what I'm up to. I'm writing a new book and it's going to be about heaven and hell. And hell is something that most people are already familiar with. They've been in hell. Maybe your home was a hell. Your marriage was a hell or is a hell. Um, maybe your workplace is a hell. Your um, the, the suffering that you go through with some some uh, illness is a living hell. And around the world, you know what's going on around the world. A lot of places, it's a living hell. Well, what you need to find is heaven. Christ said something interesting. He was talking to uh, Peter. And... Uh, he was asking the disciples, who do you say that I am? And some of them said, well, you're, you're uh, this or you're that. Who do people say that I am? That's what he asked them. Who do people say? That? Well, they, some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're this, you're that. But then he said to Peter, he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell. In other words, power of hell. The gates of hell symbolizes hell. But there is a hell, and it gets deeper and it gets darker. How do you think that the, that the world becomes, and families, and marriages, and institutions, and all the awful things you see around you, how do you suppose that it gets that way? It's because something has come out of hell, and it is in the world, and it's doing all of this stuff. And people, unfortunately, are its dupes and its pawns. It gets inside of it gets inside of people and operates through them, and they are like zombies. And they think they're operating in their own best interests, but they're not, and they do a lot of harm. So, life can be a living hell, but you don't want it to be that way. So, what you need is to. Uh, to find the kingdom of God. And how are you going to do that? Well, the first of all, so how did it come to pass that your life has become a living hell? Well, you were born into fallen conditions already. You inherited it. The, the family you grew up in and so on, you, you can't help that. But along the way, you made some mistakes, common mistakes that people make. And these common mistakes allowed hell to get inside and uh, and also made you subject to hell. See, that's the thing. You don't want to be subject to hell. You want to be subject to God. So how do we become subject to hell? Well, we there's a couple of ways that it happens. And the most common way is by way of resentment and hating other people hating parents, hating other kids, hating anyone. And the emotion of hate is base, is resentment. That's it, resentment. Resentment opens the door to all the bad things. And it makes you sensitive. See, look, look at people's dark moods and their fits of rage and so on. Somehow they're being tormented within, aren't they? They're being teased. Something's preying upon their mind and goading them on and taunting them and teasing them and pressuring them. But what is that? And we know people do it on the outside too. Other kids pressure, parents pressure, teachers pressure, everybody's pressuring. Well, there's pressure from the inside and it's a, te it's a tease. And But what is the source of that tease? It's hell. And so, um, so people who who are tormented, well, there you have it. 
and it uh, it, they they so they're they're unhappy, they're angry, they're so on and so forth. But how did it start? How did you become subject to that sort of thing that preys upon you and torments you and teases you and goads you on? How did it happen? And how did it happen that you become so sensitive to every little thing? And people look at you a certain way or they say something a certain way. You even People even become sensitive to, to sounds and to smells and to things. And, and how, how did this come to happen that we're so sensitive to mental teas and external teas and to substances and smells and so on? How did you become so sensitive? I'll give you a clue. You know what the answer is. Resentment. It puts you in a lower state of mind, a lower state of being, where you become more sensitive, thereby more nervous, more irritable, and so on. So what are you going to do? You have to see that resentment is not a good thing. You have to let it go. And it probably helps when you become an adult and uh, you have kids of your own and married and so on. Now, all of a sudden, you find yourself acting just like your parents did. And then all of a sudden, you realize, oh, my mom and dad, they didn't really want to be that way. They couldn't help themselves any more than you can help yourself. So there, when you see that, that'll soften your soul. It, uh, it'll make you amenable to uh, reason. And reason, I'm reasoning with you now. Reason is, well, let go of resentment. Let go of judgment. Let them go. Whatever happened, make it unimportant. Forget it. And when people say something or do something, overlook. Let it pass. That's, that would be the most, that would be the, your number one thing you can do. Then you will be less sensitive. You will let less negativity into your life and you will be less sensitive to torment, external or internal, or tease, external or internal. Then the other thing you should do is uh, get the little meditation that I have and start using it. It's very simple. It just teaches you how to stand back. Stand back. Instead of immersing yourself in hurt feelings and in anger and in negativity and in thoughts and in emotions and in fantasies, stand back from them. And when you stand back, you inherit the power, good power, power from God, power to, and it's his power, to, to hold those things in abeyance and keep them on the outside. You want to keep it on the outside. You don't want to let it get on the inside. You know what happens when it gets on the inside. It ruined your parents' life. It'll ruin your life if you let it get on the inside. Now, some of it already has got on the inside. Maybe a lot of it's got on the inside. That's, a, that's another topic. But the, but the same principle applies to things on the outside. Just watch, observe. Don't resent. See, wait. It's the same with things on the inside. Just watch. And you may begin to see if you're objective, if you're standing back, if you're watching, you're not immersed. And when you fall into something, just pull, pull back. That's all. Pull, pull back. If you find yourself lost in thoughts, daydreaming, then suddenly you realize it, just pull back. Stand back. If somebody is trying to pull you into an argument, you know how people do that. They say some little thing. So you gotta watch out, watch out for that. They, they'll say some, something and it has, a, it has a suggestion in it. Or they're using reverse psychology or they're, they're testing you. Or they're, they're test, see? Just see it and let it pass. Don't resent them. You can see what they're up to. 
fine. See it, discern it, but don't resent them. It's better if you see what, what they're up to. Just have an attitude of no attitude. Just have an attitude of friendly neutrality toward people and things. And just watch. Like when you were a little child, you just watched things. You have to be that way again. Because to, when you become immersed in emotion, immersed in negativity, immersed in resentment, immersed in hurt feelings, it's like falling into, into the ocean and then you find yourself being pulled down. No, you have to come up to the surface. And when you're above it, then you can just watch it and um, not let it bother you. Here's an example that I often give, but it's a good example. Let's suppose somebody came up to you on the street and they said, we're making a Hollywood movie and we need an extra here to do something and you'll get paid $500. It's only five minutes work. You get paid 500 bucks for it. Oh, great. What do I do? They say, well, the main character is coming up. The cameras will be rolling and the main character is going to slap you on the face. And when the main character slaps you on your face, then you just uh, stand there. That's all you have to do. It's part of the movie. Okay, so there you are, and you're standing there, and the cameras are rolling, and uh, here comes the, the uh, actor, and he slaps you on the face. Are you going to become resentful? No, you're not going to become resentful, because you were prepared in advance. You knew it was coming, and you, you saw it coming, and you... It just doesn't bother you. It's still, it hurts. Well, yeah, it hurts a little bit. So you can feel the hurt, but not the hate. So now do you, do, you, do you see? So what is it when people say something to you or they look at you funny or they make some comment or something? Why is it that it bothers you so much? It's the resentment. So be prepared in advance. Realize that people are lost sheep. Something is operating through them. They don't, they're mostly, they don't even know what they're doing. Um, I could go into that, but mostly they're hypnotized. And uh, when they're in their trance, which most people are in a walking trance most of the time, some level of trance, they, they don't even know what they're doing. Then later, when you, when you try to make them aware of what they did, they say, I don't even know, know what I'm doing. You see people on on hypnotized on the stage. Mostly they do when they when they awaken from the trance. They don't remember what they did. Sometimes the hypnotist has to have some little post hypnotic suggestion where he he tells the person to uh, I don't know to uh, take their shoe off and put it on their head or so, something like that just to convince them that they actually were hypnotized. That's right. They don't even believe they were hypnotized. And they, have, and they don't have any memory of what they did. So that's often the way it is. How, how many kids, this is a, a tangent, but it's a good tangent. How many kids have gone back to their parents, the, uh, the adult children, the adult children of uh, parents who, who, did, who did them wrong when they were a kid? And then they say, Mom, when I was a kid, you did this and that to me, and you screamed at me, and you did this and that. And... And, and the mom said, I didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. How often does that happen? It happens a lot. Well, sometimes they're just pretending they didn't, but they really did do know what they did. But a lot of times they don't know something else was operating. Someone else, something else's will, someone else's will was operating through them. So now you have to understand that. But you are subject to that. You're subject to other people's will operating through you. You're subject to doing things and later you don't even realize, understand, even know that you did it or know why you did it. You're subject to being sensitive to internal and external tease. And of course, your body becomes run down through all the stress because you're more subject to stress and so on. All of that, combine it all, let a few years go by so that it has a really big and bad effect upon you. And suddenly, there you are in hell. You understand now? So now what you need to do is become subject to Christ and his kingdom. And when you're subject to him, you're no longer subject to hell. Now you're subject to hell, probably. 
So I want you to see that that's the case. You'll have to pull out of your resentments and your judg judgments and your angers and your hurt feelings and your memories. All of it, you have to learn to stand back and just, just watch it, let it pass and live in God's beautiful present. Then the meditation helps with that because it's such, it, just, it gets you started. See, some people are so lost down there that they can hardly rouse themselves to even, they can't rouse themselves. You need something to help you get so you're not totally lost on there. You need to come up, 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 up in awareness, up through the layers of hypnosis to be fully awake. And then when you're awake, there's power there. It's God's power. It's his light to shine upon things, to reveal things, and to smooth out the bumps in the road, and to give you understanding and to give you patience, and he gives you time. He gives you time. A new lease, he gives you more time. You need time, a lot of time, to unravel the past and and uh, thread your way out with, with the help of the light from Christ. You, de you need time, and he'll give you time. But first you have to, you have to yearn for truth. Yearn to know the reason for your existence. Yearn to know what your purpose, why you're here. And search for truth, and you will find it. He will help you find it. Maybe the first truth that you'll see is a negative truth. You see that you're resentful. You see that you're impatient with your child. You see that you're being phony with someone. Well, that's, that's the truth that you need to see. If that's what you see, the first thing you see in God's light, then that's what you're supposed to see. So just see it and realize that God is showing you. In his light, you see your own wrong. And seeing it, well, then you have two choices then. See, then suddenly you have freedom. Maybe the first time in your life you had a true choice. You never had a true choice. Now you have a true choice. You can admit that what you're seeing about yourself is true and regret what you see and realize that you can't change yourself and just observe, just see it. And it brings a little pain, a little remorse, a little sadness. Just bear that. Don't try to do anything about it. Don't reach for your iPhone. Don't reach for a drink. Don't reach for a marijuana. Don't reach for, for music. Just bear that little pain. And then it goes away. And then... And then the sunshine is shining and the birds are singing. And uh, you, and then you will also realize that God forgives you. He doesn't hate you. He just wants you to see your little mistake. So that's the first thing. And then later will come beautiful shining truths. But first you have to see some negative ones and also some good, good ones. So what am I doing? I'm writing. So you can see I'm writing some good stuff. And I'm also on the radio. I have some new stations. A big 50,000 watt station in Denver, Colorado. A beautiful station. It extends into six states. I'm on Saturday twice and I'm on a big 50,000 watt station in Corpus Christi, Texas. It covers the entire southeast Texas coast, Gulf Coast, into Louisiana and all the way down into Mexico. Big station. I'm on in Boston, Massachusetts. I can be heard in New York City. I'm on the air in San Francisco. I'm on the air in Southern California. I'm all over. Listen to my program. You got to watch my videos. You got to listen to my to my radio programs. You got to read some of my writings. Get my book. Some of my books. Read a little bit. Just read a little bit until you realize something. And when you realize something, then just take that take that realization with you. But most of all, you should get the meditation. Get started on it. And uh, it'll do you good. A lot of good.